Hi everybody, this is Vectone, and I'm bringing y'all another tutorial video today. We're going to be using Ableton Live 9, and uh, if you haven't uh, seen Ableton Live, this is what it looks like right here. I'm using Ableton Live 9 Lite. Now this version actually came with the Novation Launchpad Pro, and if you'll see the other screen being displayed, you can actually see the Novation Launchpad Pro. And I just acquired this uh, discounted piece of equipment at Guitar Center. And if you look next to the launch pad, you have my Launch Control XL. Now this I've had for a while, and I actually had the Launch Pad S, and I made some videos with that, but I just couldn't refuse this discounted deal. And uh, the reason I'm using Ableton Live today is because I wanted to get better functionality with these Novation uh, launch pad and the launch control because they're actually designed to be used inside Ableton. They have optimal performance in Ableton. You can get the most control over the digital audio workstation when you're using Ableton. And they work in FL Studio and there are, you know, uh mappings and and routings that that work in FL Studio, but they're just not quite as good and and you you can just, you know, when you're using the launch pad and the launch control in Ableton, you really don't even have to use your mouse all that much. Everything is just right in front of you with the buttons. And so today what we're going to be going over is how to open FL Studio as a VST inside Ableton. Now the reason I, uh, someone would want to do this is to actually get the best of both worlds. They would get functionalities from Ableton and they can also use FL Studio inside Ableton and use everything from FL Studio and have that all routed outside into Ableton. So you've got everything coming out into one master out. And personally, for me, the reason I'm doing this is because I can now use my Novation launch pad and my launch control in Ableton and also use FL Studio. And that way I get the best um, button mapping option and I get Ableton Live. And Ableton Live 9 Lite actually came with the Launchpad Pro and it has come with some of the other products I've I've acquired in the past, but I just haven't downloaded it before, so... Um, this is the first time I'm using Ableton Live, and uh, you know I've I've worked with it a little bit to get this tutorial going. But if you see some, me do something that you see is wrong, or maybe a better way or more efficient way to do it, let me know, and I'll really can appreciate that because you know I'm just getting used to this DAW. So right now, what we're gonna need to do is open up Ableton if you haven't done that, and all you have to do is make sure you have a MIDI track open. Now, if you see right here, I actually already have a little track here that says FL Studio VSTI. Now, the reason I already have it open is because I need it to have it on record right now, so you'll be able to hear what's going on. But this is just a MIDI track, so if you know how to open a MIDI track, you can just right-click and insert MIDI track, and, it, and it'll say MIDI here. Now, what you need to do is drag your FL Studio plugin into this MIDI track. In order to do that, you need to actually specify Ableton to look in a certain folder for your plugin. So we're looking at plugins right here. You can see I already have it selected. You can just click this on the side in your little library. And it'll open up all the plugins that Ableton has recognized. If you don't know how to actually specify the folder, I can show you how. You just go to Options, down to Preferences, go to File Folder, and then uh, it says Use VST Plugin Custom Folder. Uh, make sure that's on. And then... Uh, <coughs> So you uh, use VST plugin custom folder, make sure that's on, and then you can specify the folder right below. You see I have it specified to program files by 86 VST plugins. And uh, that's actually where FL Studio VSTi and FL Studio VSTi Multi are. Now when FL Studio installs on your computer, it's going to have both of these installed. And if you don't know where they are, you can just search them up in your computer down here or you can go where FL Studio is installed and there's actually uh, a little I think it's a .exe or something that will run and install the plugin if you lost it or something and if anyone needs specifics on how to do that just message me and I can help you with that otherwise you should be able to actually work this and then you can press rescan and it'll scan for your plugin and there you go you can just drop it in to your MIDI and there we go we have FL Studio now and it should pop up, pop up with something like this now, just to, to let you guys know, the difference between F VSTi and VSTi Multi is that this VSTi is just going to route everything into one MIDI channel. So everything inside FL Studio, when you open it, it's going to come out of just this one channel right here. If you use VSTi Multi, you can actually route individual instruments inside FL Studio 
to route outside into different tracks uh, within Ableton. Personally, for me, I'm using the light version of Ableton, so I can actually only have up to eight tracks loaded in Ableton. So really, it makes sense for me to have everything I want to come in from FL Studio come out into one simple channel. Uh, and then I can just go into FL Studio and have as many channels as I want and as many in instruments as I need. And then I have seven other channels in Ableton to use and uh, put Ableton effects and Ableton instruments in there. So when you have FL Studio actually open, you can go ahead and uh, just click this here and we can uh, load our plugin. Let's see it. Uh, let's see here. Press the little settings here to bring it up. And then you can click on the Fruity Loop icon and you'll see that you actually have FL Studio running. Now when I press buttons on my keyboard, you can actually hear input from FL Studio. Now when I go into FL, I have the uh, little basic right here selected. When you open up at v the VST plugin, it actually has all these settings pre-made on here. So when you open it, it's gonna have a bunch of different instruments already routed into your mixer right here. And uh, they're all labeled and nicely organized, but you can change them of course. And, but now when I play, I, you can actually hear the instrument. Now, what I'm struggling to figure out is actually how to change instruments, because uh, I'm trying to change the instrument here and play notes on my keyboard, but I can't actually change the instrument. So that's something I don't know how to do. So if you know how to do that, please let me know. But I can always go into my piano roll and just use the piano roll here and play the notes in the piano roll. But I can't get them to play out of my keyboard so that's that's a problem and if anyone knows i'd really appreciate that uh so as you see fl studio is now running inside ableton and when i press notes you can see it's coming out of this channel and it's going into the master right here so now what i can do is i can actually arm the uh recording which i'm actually doing right now for the purpose of this video and record anything I want, and it'll record straight into the arrangement view inside Ableton. And I, I actually changed that by pressing Tab. Uh, so now anything I do in FL is going to be, you know, sounds are coming out of the mixer too, as you can see. It's routed to this basic. And I can add effects on that if I want. So let's just add some reverb. And now we have reverb on it. And now I'm going to just mute that and go into Ableton and show you that also uh, I have two sins right here and they're going to be reverb and delay. So when I turn that on, they, these effects will also affect the sound. Okay, so you have access to a whole variety of effects. You know, you have all the Ableton effects you can put on it and you have all your FL Studio effects. Um... But like I said, the reason, the main reason for me for using this is because I'm trying to get the best configuration with my launch pad. Now, as you can see, the launch pad is pretty crazy looking and there's a lot of different things. What I have right now is it's actually set to record arm and that's just what I can actually use to start recording and stop recording tracks. So right now it's set to be recording. These, these two bottom lights are highlighted, which means that channels one and two AKA FL Studio VSTI and audio, that's my mic. Both of those are set to record. Up there you see the top two flashing red lights right here and here. These are actually recording the individual channels and putting those into the arrangement view of Ableton Live. Um, so there, there's other things I can do and I'm, I'm gonna go into a whole video on the launch pad later, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit about you know what things do and how they work and uh, also, the main point of this was how to open FL Studio inside Ableton. So, you know, you can do anything you want now. And and the one problem I also had was loading plugins into here. Like, I have my whole um, complete 10, and none of them showed up in here. Only Reactor 5 showed up. And uh, I thought that maybe it was because I had the 64-bit uh, version installed, and I had my 32-bit plugins in the search folder. So then I uninstalled Ableton and reinstalled the 32-bit version. And uh, then I put the 32-bit uh, plugins into the search folder, and st they still haven't shown up. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal because, really, I'm just using Ableton to uh, control the launch pad, and I can just use FL Studio and load anything I want in here. You know, I already have all my plugins found within FL, so I can 
uh, sorry about that if I cut out, but so I can just add a, you know, FM8 or whatever I want. Any, anything that's not found in Ableton, it's all in here too. And you can hear all the different samples. You can, you can just, you know, that you have everything at your disposal. Uh, so, you know, Ableton is a great program, but if you already have, uh, you know, if you're already using FL Studio and you're wondering maybe if I should go to Ableton or, you know, I, the, honestly, the answer for, that I have for you is to just get the lowest version of Ableton possible. Try to get the light version with some gear. Maybe you already have the light version. I'm not sure if you can actually download it, the light version for free already, but uh, yeah, just, you know, download any version of Ableton you can and put FL Studio as a plugin in there and you're fine. Uh, there's also another uh, aspect of this kind of, you know, this situation called rewiring and you can actually rewire one plugin or I'm sorry, one digital audio workstation into the other using the plugin, which is called rewire. And, uh, that's a little bit more complicated, but achieves a similar effect. And you can actually also route FL studio instruments individually into Ableton. And, uh, I'm not really, really, uh, into, I haven't researched a lot on that yet and I'm still working on how to do that, but that can be a video too, if you guys want. And let me know if you want me to do a video about how to, I don't know, like make a light show with an Ableton. Cause I know how to do that now. And I know how to control a lot of the different things with the launch pad. So I may do a launch pad specific video. Um, just you guys really, I really need y'all's feedback to let me know what y'all think. And, uh, I really appreciate all the views so far, especially on my one video that's got the most views, my side chaining video. So thank y'all a lot for that. And I appreciate it. And, uh, anyways, I'm going to hopefully bring some new music to you guys. So y'all, y'all be on the lookout. Now y'all have a good day. Thanks a lot.